Welcome into Drew's Daily Diamond for Friday, September 13th, 2024. I am Drew Martin breaking down the slate of games. Friday, the 13th action coming your way as we got two college football games at the top and then four MLB Friday night lights games heading your way, guys. Let me know in the comments below what your MLB picks are for today. College football, NFL for this weekend. All is welcome. It helps out the algorithm in the comments below. Smash that like button if you're liking the content. As we got first game up here, talking college football, 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific, nationally televised matchup. UNLV and Kansas. Kansas, the Jayhawks, minus 9. There is a 9 and a hook out there as the favorite, 58 being the total. This is a rematch of last year's guaranteed rate bowl, which Kansas won 49 to 36. They did cover as about a touchdown favorite, but hey. New year, new teams, modern day college football. UNLV now comes in 2 and 0 on the season and they beat the Houston Cougars earlier this season who then almost upset Oklahoma. So that win against Houston does look pretty strong right now and Kansas, hey, they lost to Illinois. Now granted they did have three turnovers and do need to bring up a couple trends here with their head coach Lance Leopold who I think is one of the better head coaches in college football. He's 9-1 and one against the spread off of a straight-up favorite loss. So if the team kind of loses in a game that they were supposed to win, they usually come back the next one and play very well under Lance Leopold. Kansas is the home team here, and it should be a, a, a you know quite home atmosphere, but it does need to be noted this is at actually the Kansas City soccer team, the MLS team stadium. This is not in, uh, in Lawrence, their normal – home stadium because there's renovations being done this is the second of two games in this soccer stadium and they're playing their last four home games in arrowhead so something to note there um their quarterback jalen daniels you know last year he had a great season did get banged up a little bit but this year it's a new offensive coordinator under jeff grimes their old oc moved to penn state and the offense really hasn't looked as in sync so I, I don't know if I'm ready to bet on them here. You know, it's a short week as well. This is a Friday night game. That also kind of works against what I was talking about with Lance Leopold getting his team back ready because, you know, that head coaching advantage gets shrunk. In my opinion, head coaching advantage matters more when there's more preparation time for it. Not that UNLV uh, has bad coaches by any means. I mean, they're 2-0 and out the gate. The team does look a lot better off of a bowl, bowl appearance last, last year. I just think nine in the hook, guys, it's it's a little bit pricey on Kansas, I really think. So, uh, you know, the offense hasn't looked good. I went into that. It, it just isn't going on all cylinders right now. And I think UNLV has a strong football program here. Talked about the Houston win. We get near double digits. Find that plus nine in a hook. Let's jump on the dog and the running Rebels to stay within the number against Kansas. We also got an 8 p.m. kickoff. In the Big 12 Conference, Arizona and Kansas State, we are seeing Kansas State minus seven at most sports books as I'm talking uh, on Thursday night in the overnight market, 59 and a hook being the total. Now, this is two Big 12 Conference teams. However, Arizona and Kansas State already had this game scheduled in an out-of-conference game before, of course, Arizona moving to the Big 12 Conference. So this will not count towards the Big 12 Conference standings. Um, however, an important game for both teams, Arizona coming in, uh, Noah Fafifa, their quarterback and their star wide receiver McMillan, by the way, they were high school teammates as well under and their head coach, Brent Brennan. This is his first road game for, for the Wildcats short week. I think it's kind of tough travel here. He's up against the Kansas state team that, you know, they got that scoop and score what in the fourth quarter against Tulane that really helped out their cause. They might've lost that game. This is a top 20 matchup. Both teams coming in ranked in the top 20. I'd go towards Kansas State here, though, guys. Their head coach, Kleinman, he's 6-1 and one straight up and against the spread at home last season. And I think Kansas State's better up front. I think they're going to control uh, the line of scrimmage here. So overall, I think minus 7 at home, short week with travel for Arizona. I think that works into it. Let's lay the touchdown with the Wildcats at home. Next one up, we'll head uh, on to the Diamond. We get the New York Mets and the Philadelphia Phillies. 6.40 Eastern start time. 
a big one in the NL East division, number one versus number two in the standings. Jose Quintana, the lefty going for the Metropolitans. Aaron Nola for the Phillies. Phillies minus 155 home favorites, eight and a hook being the total. Now, Philadelphia, 30 games over 500. They're also 50 and 25 at home. They've been money at home. They just swept the Tampa Bay Rays, winning three straight. The Mets, however, 80 and 66, a solid season here for New York. They've been great on the road, 40 and 32, eight games over 500 when playing outside of City Field. They've been hot lately, too. 11 and 2, their last 13. They've been playing great baseball, talking about the New York Mets. And they got Quintana on the hill, the 35 year old Colombian. He's 2 and 0, his last two starts. And actually, he's only let up one earned run his last three starts combined. So this guy's been hot. Hot left hand for Quintana. He's up against Aaron Nola, the 31-year-old out of LSU. His last time out, he gave up nine hits and only four innings against the Marlins, giving up five runs. Now he's having to take a step up in class going up against the Mets lineup, from the Marlins lineup to the Mets lineup after giving up nine hits. I don't think that's promising. He did have a great start against the Mets back in May, actually went nine full innings. But if you remember, the Mets got off to kind of a slow start, particularly offensively. So I think this is going to be a different lineup that he faces. And they actually lost the last time Nola took the hill as minus 250 favorites. I just talked about that uh, that Marlins outing. So, you know, he burned a lot of cash last time out. I think the odds makers are overpricing him. And actually, he's just one in three since we started August. So August and September, he's one in three record wise. And uh, he's been hit a bunch since the turn of August. Now, Philadelphia does have a good lineup. They're good against lefties, but the Mets have a pretty solid lineup themselves and Quintana on the Hill. Guys, we get plus 144 here. I think this is kind of back and forth game. It's a tight one. Let's put the 44 cents in our pocket with the dog barking, jumping on the New York Mets plus 144. We got Boston and New York up next, Red Sox and Yankees. Game two of four, seven o'clock Eastern hour. Tanner Hawk versus Clark Schmidt is the pitching matchup. We are seeing the Yankees minus 138 home favorites, eight in the hook being the total. Boston hovering right around 500. The Yankees, 21 games over 500. And they got Schmidt on the hill, 28-year-old out of South Carolina since May the 4th. 1.57 1.57 ERA, 35 to 8 strikeout to walk ratio. It's only what, what, like five starts because he was on the IL, but his first start back off the IL for the Yankees starter. He went four and two thirds, zero earned runs against the Cubbies. So a solid start there. I'm looking to bet on him. He's up against Hawk here for the Red Sox. If you watch yesterday's show, we weren't sure uh, who the starter was going to be, if it was Criswell or Hawk. Well, it, it looks like it's Hawk on Friday night. And I'm not really looking to bet on him. He's eight and 10 on the year. He's given up four runs in his last six innings uh, in his last start, four walks, by the way, to the Yankees. And the last time facing the Yankees in Yankee Stadium, he gave up three runs in three innings with four walks. So not going deep at all. And this Boston bull in, in this Boston bullpen, you know, they're one of the worst bullpens over the last like two months right now you know you go by bullpen whip they're actually ranking 29 so only the colorado rockies actually 28 only the rockies in the white Sox, kind of ranking below them by bullpen whip uh looking to go against hawk and looking to bet on clark schmidt we add in the yankees number one lineup overall number one against righties hey the 38 cents i think it looks short guys we get red Sox, yankees big series here game number two we're jumping on the yankees listing schmidt as the starter Minus 138 as the favorite. Next one up, 840 Eastern, heading to mile high. It's the Chicago Cubs and the Colorado Rockies. Austin Gomber, the lefty, going for the Rocks. Javier Assad going for the Cubbies. Minus 138, that's the Cubs as the road favorite. 10 in the hook being the total. Cubs come in 75 and 71, four games over 500. They've won three of their last four. They just won two of three at the L.A. Dodgers on this start of this road trip. And Javier Hassad, his last time out, he went five and two thirds, only three hits and one earned run against that good Yankees lineup we just talked about. He's a 27-year-old Mexican-born pitcher making his way up in the Mexican League. And something I've noticed since handicapping uh, 
Mexican baseball is they have high elevation in like half of their stadium. So he's used to pitching in thin air. I actually think that will help him here in Coors Field, something the market might not be in tune to. He's up against Austin Gomber, the 30-year-old out of FAU, the former <laughs> Ow. Last three home starts, 12 earned runs and 14 innings, giving up 20 hits. He's been hit around in Coors a bunch. And Colorado, yes, they are a better bet at home. But the first game home, not so much. And sure enough, this is their first game home off of a nine-game, three-city road trip, which that's a fade schedule spot in Major League Baseball. This Rockies lineup has been cold. They've struggled against righties. And one of the worst bullpens by my ratings in Major League Baseball. I think the Cubbies, minus 138. I think this number's short, guys. It's the Cubs over the Rockies. One game left, guys. It's uh, bottom of the card, 10-15 Eastern, 7-15 Pacific. But first, MLB 50, a coupon code gives you $50 off. Premium picks, Drew Martin, MLB through the World Series. That coupon code MLB 50 at checkout. Check out premium picks. We got college football, NFL, and Major League Baseball all coming your way. And guys, a reminder, if you could comment below, it does help out the algorithm. Anything is welcome. You're your picks for this weekend for the Friday night slate, all is welcome. Smash that like button if you're liking the content. As we got last game up, 10-15 Eastern, game number one of the Padres and the Giants series. Dylan Cease on the hill for the pods. Logan Webb going for the Giants. Giants minus 110, home favorites, total of seven. We get the Padres 82-65. and 65. They are off an off day on Thursday where the Giants, two games under 500, they just played Milwaukee Thursday night. The pitching matchup here, Logan Webb and Dylan Cease, it's actually back-to-back -back versus the same lineup. These two guys just faced off against each other last week in their last start. Cease, six innings, four earned for the pods. Webb went six innings, three earned, so I guess a little bit better start. But the time before that, he did give up 10 hits to this Padres lineup. I actually, it, Cease is a guy we've been betting on just because we lost on him the last time these two faced. It's not going to stop us here. I think the Padres, the hotter lineup, they're better against righties. This is the number two ranked lineup against righties by weighted runs created. Plus the Giants, number 22 against uh, uh, across all of Major League Baseball, plus a bullpen edge here towards the Friars. Listing Cease as the starter, the slight dog here, minus 103 in the overnight market. It's the Padres over the Giants. In recap, guys, we got the Cubbies with the sod on the hill, minus 138 over the Rockies. We get the Yankees, minus 138 over the Red Sox. The Mets, big dog, plus 144 over the Phillies. And in college football, we're on Kansas State, minus the touchdown. And we're on UNLV, plus nine and a hook over Kansas. So I'm Drew Martin checking out for Friday. Guys, we'll be back early for Saturday college football. Come back on Friday afternoon. Check that out for Drew's Daily Diamonds. Until then, cash those tickets, smash that like button. Thanks for tuning in.